Hello, M. Good evening, B. And happy Halloween to you, too. Um, what does one say to that? Truly, it is Halloween. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, well, I can't say that because I do not celebrate Halloween. But um, happy whatever makes you happy. Happy hamburgers. Exactly, exactly. In my case, happy keto um, veggie chicken. <laughs> Everything's wrong in that sentence. Like everything from start to finish. I know, I know. But at least I'm super thin. Um, so I'll be wrong or not, you know. There, there's results, so maybe you should reconsider your happy burger um, and thinking about something keto friendly. Don't fat shame me. I'm beautiful as I am. But it's so tempting. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> no, look. So, what happened before the last episode of the podcast and this one? Is that you finally, uh, you were finally a guest in my in my home. Uh, and what a cozy, comfy home it is. Thank you. Uh, but, you know, it has nothing to do with um, the things that are there, but it's just how the vibe should be. Uh, but the, the, my, how should I put it, my impression about your visit. Uh, yeah. You know, sticks around the fact that my my old older daughter uh, cannot stop talking about you. Um, it's it's ridiculous. Like she's like, so so where's Mister B? <laughs> well, she called me Mister Postman, so you can she can always call me Mister P. Actually, no, that sounds bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, the point is, the point is. My my kid likes you, which is great. Uh, what's not so great is uh, you're obviously going to be uh, a guest in our house more often. You know, which is something to deal with, but it is what it is. Be be prepared to look for me in your neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Um, it was such a pleasure, and uh, my wife was very happy. You, she finally had the chance to meet you. Um. Uh, the kid was super happy to uh, destroy your uh, drawing of a penguin. Um, we we she, put it. She we, is not, she, we put it on the fridge, she, man. We were looking at it as we're having breakfast. Uh, wait, you put the deface drawing. Yep. Oh man, that means she liked it. You know, if she wanted to quote unquote modify. Your drawing, you understand? She, she, that means she likes it. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, so why does she never try to modify you? Oh, ho, ho, did they touch her nerve? Um, that, that's such so ridiculous. But I'll, but I'll, I'll let you take that point. <laughs> <laughs> so, M, Halloween, your favorite, your favorite church feast. You know what's interesting? Uh, yes. You you posted a video about okay. Halloween, about Halloween, something yeah. down the lines of should Orthodox Christians celebrate Halloween? I yeah. think it was, it was the literal title, and I remember uh, walking down the streets of Vienna with with a, with a couple of friends, uh, seeing the notification, uh, and making a brief comment about it with with a friend of mine. And him asking me, so what do you think? Should Orthodox Christians celebrate Halloween? And, and you my... said, wait until I see the video. No, I actually said no. I don't see what, what what's there to celebrate, uh, especially from a perspective of an Orthodox Christian. And I'm sure B is going to say the same thing <laughs> in, the, in, the, <laughs> in this video. Uh, but then later in the evening, I, I realized that uh, B is actually a fan of Halloween. Um, 
Mm, not really. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm a fan. <laughs> you are making Halloween cookies. I would say that's pretty no, much. No, no, no. I'm not Halloween. making them. I'm not making it. My German teacher is making them. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't be making them at all. So you're just an innocent bystander. Why? Why they're making blasphemous Halloween cakes? Oh, I'm goodness. a victim. I'm a victim of circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said every bad person ever on trial. Yeah. But anyways, anyways. Um, I think you are a fan of Halloween. I, I mean, I think you fancy uh, stuff about it. Okay. Well, uh, I, I would put it like this: I like it, but just that, like it. Not a huge fan. Uh, I wouldn't dress up myself in costume because I'm lazy. One, uh, one Halloween, and this is, I think, the only Halloween party I ever attended, um, I dressed up myself as a Cartesian monk. Literally everybody, everybody thought that I was Q uh, Klux Klan. Literally everybody, without oh, exception. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, didn't really thought of the implications of having a very long pointed hood in a white robe. Yeah, let, let's um, let's talk about this more. So first of all, I'd like to elaborate on my opinion uh, because you know when you when you put it like that, it, it looks like it kind of looks like oh look at this hater or something like that. So I don't personally hate Halloween. I don't personally care about Halloween, because I personally have no connection to it, right? Uh, especially okay. in, in Serbia, um, it's it's a bit of a new thing, because, you know, Serbia, like every other, what we refer to as banana country, um, exactly. imports a lot of crap from the, from the West. And it's really, yeah. uh, you know, in comparison to the sheer quantities of crap that we import halloween is good <laughs> you know halloween is decent oh, um, oh precisely yeah i mean i mean but i'm i must admit i'm not the biggest fan of it being imported into into well across europe actually because it it, it obviously originates um in this form from the united states um, yeah. and it, it is being spread uh, across across the other continents and, um, okay. you know, it's, it's not like my, one of my favorite things being imported from the West. Um, you know, as when we were kids, we, we used to dress up all the time. You know, we used to, <clears throat> sorry, we used to go to parties where, where, um, you would have themed, uh, parties and all that, you know, and yeah. I, I see that this Halloween thing. First of all, I see it as just another money grabbing, uh, uh, you know, thing in the United States. Uh, you know, starting with the Valentine's Day and and even Christmas and all that. Like, like seriously, yeah. seriously, guys, you like to buy shit, <laughs> you know, and and you have so many different days to facilitate to facilitate this um, obsession, uh, capitalistic obsession of, of about buying things and. Halloween is actually no exception, just like Christmas uh, in a lot of ways, you know, in the United States and, uh, and, and across, you know, I'm, I'm not picking on the United States here, seriously. Um, Except you totally were for the past five minutes. Yeah, well, but then when you say you aren't, you know, it's all, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, true. Yeah, so, but I, I'm, I'm really not only talking about the United States. Like, like if, if we're, if we've been realistic, Christmas today uh like if i if i may refer to it as the secular christmas has nothing okay. nothing to do with christmas uh, but it has Absolutely. everything to do about buying things and presents and that time of year you know all of yeah. well that being I... said uh, you know halloween is not not one of my favorites um because you know it's kind of themed in a way that i don't like personally and i think many christians in general might have uh, problems with it i don't go that deep 
into into you know analyzing Halloween. I know that some people, especially Christians, do. Like I would read uh, something down the lines of Halloween has pagan roots. Uh, it's it's a it's a form of uh, idolatry where Satan, the angel of death, is you know um, the centerpiece uh, of it all. Okay. You know, and there's you know it's it's a bit of a zealot you know uh, point of view. Okay, which uh, which I don't necessarily share. Uh, I don't think I think it has roots in many things. Um, but you know, if if kids are going to dress up, first of all, I mean they can do it on another date because uh, that date is in my in my life. It's reserved for Saint Luca, which is uh, uh, the patron saint of my family. Um, okay, you know, so you know, but you know we I'm have invest, I'm, every I'm day invested. every day there's a saint. Mm -hmm. You know, well, that's so. why that's why I'm 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 highlighting and emphasizing that this is my point of view, right? Yeah, like opinions are like uh, like you know, but <laughs> everybody has them. Well, this is mine. This is mine. Okay. I'm not a fan of Halloween, but I also okay. ha don't have you know anything against people who are. I don't I don't really care. Sometimes it, it especially in Serbia, when I see especially you know, people our age, around, you know, in their 30s and stuff, quote-unquote celebrating Halloween, that looks kind of cringy to me, so that yeah. that might be a time when I would be, like, against it uh, but but all in all you know, um, I'm I'm also a fan of good fun so, um, I, would, I was never invited to a Halloween party, so uh, maybe maybe I'm missing out I don't know. What about you? Uh, you? You just said you were on a Halloween party. So again, another te step towards being a fan of Halloween. Uh, this Halloween party was simply a costume party. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, these I like. Uh, these I like. And uh, the couple of Halloween quote-unquote parties they were were simply held by my German teacher. And she simply decorates it in, you know, little uh, little ornaments, and that's about it. Uh, I suppose that um, that Halloween has much more, you know, impact if you, you know, like stroll from through American neighborhood and everything's covered in fake cobwebs with pumpkins uh, and all that, uh, all those things. But you know, when it's on an individual basis, at least uh, in Serbia, uh, it. It's not as impactful, you know? So Yeah, like, seriously, man. Do kids in Serbia go trick-and-treating? No, no. Like, seriously? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. They don't. Uh, I'm absolutely sure of it. I mean, I would, I would be, like, completely blown away if I had a kid knock on my door uh, on Halloween and ask for candy or cash, right? No. Oh no, I don't think they ask for cash. Okay, I yeah, think. yeah, obviously, obviously my knowledge. Uh... Uh, but if they ask for cash, <laughs> I'm going trick-or-treating. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir, I'm dressed as a 32-year-old YouTuber. Give me money, which is essentially what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine that trick-or-treating thing is could be a bit like... Dangerous. I'm. I'm wondering how they like. You know, did do, do bad things happen? Like, I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, there are urban legends that, as far as I know, have been unconfirmed about kids receiving, you know, candies with needles. Oh, with, uh, yeah. Yeah, but these were just urban legends. However, uh, kids are taught uh, to exercise caution because you know. They have to knock on the doors of a lot of strangers, you know, and you can imagine what what horrors can ensue. And I mean real life horror. I don't mean ooh a Dracula horror, you know. So... Yeah, I, I can just imagine uh, my kids going trick or treating. Of course, when when older, 
uh, uh, dressed as Saint Luke. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this this is completely hypothetical, okay? Because okay. you know uh, they, they will won't be doing such things. I I think um, on on the day of their pa- patron saint, but I don't know. You know, uh, I don't know what what's gonna be. You know, cool when when yeah. they when they get to that age. I, I really have no idea. Maybe they are exactly. actually in that age. Well, what's the age? Uh, what's the age for that trick or treating? Uh, for what? I don't think. Well. I think you simply grow out of it at one point. But what's what's the what's the starting age? Mm, well, I don't know. I suppose uh, as long as you can walk and can say trick or treat, that yeah. you're free to go. So my you're kid, go. so my kid is is already a candidate, obviously. So yeah, I think I think hy- she would be hypothetically if she wanted to go trick or treating. Uh, yeah, I'd probably be there with a baseball bat. Uh, Closely monitoring the situation. Uh, have you ever watched that cartoon? Um, cats, uh, cats don't dance, or cats can't dance. I can't remember what the name exactly. Anyway, you have these uh, all sorts of like animals, uh, you know, and they talk anthrop- anthropomorphic animals, and uh, they're trying to make big in Hollywood. Uh, however, the main villain is this uh, parody of Shirley Temple called da- uh, Darla Dimple. And the funny thing is, she's like called very cute, but also extremely evil. And she's constantly followed by this huge butler that can literally uh, turn you into dust with his bare hand. So you can go as two of them. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, something uh, interesting happened in one American city. Uh, I saw this on YouTube news. Um, uh, As far as I could gather, uh, a mayor of a city started posting uh, warning signs uh, on the on the entrances to the houses of registered sex offenders, as in uh, you're not uh, children are not allowed to enter the house or trick or treat here, turn back, and so on. And I'm all for it, to be quite honest. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So, so, so he like publicly announced, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, I can imagine that being a bit of a. Yeah, uh, I I don't know. I mean, uh, hmm. I, I to be quite honest, I don't know how uh, sexual offender registry actually works in the United States. Uh, when do you have to emphasize that you're on the sex offenders list? You know, so uh, I don't know how far out of bounds this movie is, but it makes sense to me. You know. In a way, you know, so I would double check. Yeah, I don't think like revealing the address, uh, you know, goes under what's what's expected. I think that's that's an overkill. Y- you yeah. know, you know, um, especially as a as as a uh, first of all, as as a father, I'm yeah. definitely appalled. Uh, in every single way, as a human being, I'm appalled in every single way. Thinking about somebody, you know, being being yeah. a, 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 like a, like a sex predator, um, you know, and, and a and a pedophile and all that. But yeah. but as a Christian, uh, you know, I know that forgiveness is is huge, huge deal. It's it's above it's above so many things. It's forgiveness is above prayer. Um, True, and uh, because it's an act of love, and love is above prayer, uh, and it's also an act of um, uh, uh, obeying, um, um, obeying the, the Lord, uh, which yeah. is also above prayer. And we all know, uh, you know, the, the place prayer has in, in the life of a Christian. Therefore, um, I'd like to believe that these people, who especially those who commit those sins. Um, are still people worthy of um, salvation and people worthy of being a part of uh, the the broad community. And, you know, like Precisely. putting a stamp on them is one thing, um, which I think they deserve, you know, being registered. Uh, but I don't think they deserve their address being, being uh, um, published because, you know, th- that attracts people who are 
precisely not in the mood of forgiveness and you know love is above prayer <laughs> i and and that's that's i you just got me thinking uh, about that so i apologize for hijacking uh, whatever no, no, pre- uh, that is that, this is precisely why i mentioned it because it highlights a problem of you having a lot of children knocking to uh, on strangers homes and some of those strangers can be you know proven sex offenders but on the other hand uh, you actually expose people to like wider of community without them so to speak uh, having uh, no control over who can see what they did and that can in turn get really dangerous for them of course a lot of people will say they deserve everything that they get their way and i don't i i understand that argument but uh, that is not how things go in a, in an organized society you don't you don't do vigilantes in an organized society you do vigilantes in a social society that is crumbling apart yeah but you also know that people love to do vigilantes oh precisely um is is there a mob anywhere i could join <laughs> Oh, I think that uh, there's always a standing Twitter mob waiting oh, to yeah, their yeah. show to share. Yeah, to, like logging into Twitter is like picking, picking a ra- random Twitter lynch to um, either observe or be a part of. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to make this episode, uh, I thought that we could share, I don't want to say scary stories because we agreed on this subject uh, half an hour ago, <laughs> so we literally had nothing to uh, nothing to prepare, and I don't want a Jenna and Julian situation because they read some scary stories from uh, No Sleep subreddit, but then it turned out that uh, those stories were copyrighted and they had to delete a couple of podcasts. <laughs> mm. so, uh, and uh, I mean, I, I feel really sorry for them because I know that they would never have done it, uh, you know if they knew it in advance, but I don't want us to end up in a similar situation. So, so just, just a second, you can't read stuff from Reddit or in a podcast or it's just that uh, specific content? No, okay, uh, it, because uh, on a, a No Sleep subreddit, people post their original copyrighted horror stories. Okay, so they, they, there's a specific rule for that particular subreddit. I think so, or specific posts. I, uh, I didn't really uh, get into it. We can link the uh, Jen and Julian's apology and where they talk about uh, where they talk about that in more detail. Um, by the way, uh, I did write one horror story. It's called "The Passenger," and we won't be reading it right now because it's in Serbian, and I don't want. Uh, majority of this podcast to be uh, 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 what's the word? Just a moment, because yeah, but it already a, is. That's how you. That's it how already you is. It, <laughs> it, it, it already is. But it is especially jar- jarring when you actually read it. You know, <laughs> and yeah. and me looking for a word in a dictionary isn't really scary. It's cringy, but not scary. <laughs> Come on, don't 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 say that. First of all, let's be B's vocabulary in English is great, so you wouldn't Well yeah, that. but even I can, you know, lose a word. So however, uh, I thought that we would share some of maybe short horror stories that we heard when we were kids or shared times when we were most scared. Um sure. Wanna go first or second? Uh, I can go first because uh, you literally sounded like you had nothing to share at the moment. So no, I, I, <laughs> I thought can of buy a you some time. things. Um, I'm just considering if I should share them or not. That's all. Okay, uh, I will give you ample time to reconsider your position. Yeah, just just so that we're clear. Um, I hate when podcasts and you know shows like that turn into like a public confession, uh, oh. you know, series. So. Okay, this will be interesting, no, but or, uh, or it won't. But do share your story. Okay, when we are talking about confessions, I have to confess that I fell asleep during a meeting again. Oh my god! Really? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, 
we had this uh, meeting that I weren't supposed to attend in the sense of I had literally nothing to get out of the meeting or to provide for the meeting. And it was late in the afternoon. I had barely any sleep before that work day. And I tried to keep my eyes open. It felt, hor it felt horribly. One of my coworkers actually snapped a couple of photos of me <laughs> trying to keep myself awake. And one of them uh, sort of looks like me getting really annoyed at a laptop. And he made a meme like, <laughs> when your opponent gets a necropolis at random in Heroes of Might and Magic. <laughs> 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 and then uh, 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 another um, subscriber of mine, he made, uh, he made uh, tons of, I think, really good memes with that specific face, like, when Steven Anderson slanders the Jesus prayer and there's that look that I gave which is very meany but okay enough derailed scary stuff okay when I was little uh, really little uh, there was this uh, village in Bosnia Agici that we would go and one of my first experiences of this inexplicable fear that I felt was this uh, See, this is what I'm talking about. H how do you call that metal pipe that uh, gutter? Okay, it's gutter. I, I, I forgot it. So uh, th there was this gutter, you know, that was going from the roof down. But the end pipe of the gutter was sort of smashed. Uh, for some reason, I had a phobia of that gutter. For the longest time, I would refuse to pass by that gutter alone. And... Uh, uh, even uh, once I could pass by it alone, I was terrified of it. I don't know why. It sounded, uh, it sounded, it looked so horrifying and wholesome, like something that shouldn't be there. I think that uh, Stephen King would uh, <laughs> include that in uh, IT novel if he had a similar experience as a kid. Mm -hmm. So I'm just slow. This is, you know, I, I, was, a, I was a stupid little kid. When I was that older, uh, a friend of mine introduced me to the, con uh, to the concept of a zombie. What's a zombie? And she said, oh, they're like these animated corpses and they live in basements. Instant phobia from my building basement. And because as kids, you generally don't go to basements often, you know? So there are always these musty, dank, uh, dark places of unknown and now somebody tells you that these zombies live in these places like no 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 and this was you know uh, at least in serbian buildings often basements are actually on the ground floor so they're not really subterranean but they still tend to be kind of dark uh, but in my apartment building this was subterranean and man no <laughs> and one one more scary story that this friend shared with me. Thank you, Marina. Uh, she told me uh, about these lights. Uh, like, well, I, I would uh, say that we, call, we would call them Will of the Wisps or jack o lanterns today. That lived under your bed. And uh, these lights can cut off your legs if you, you know, get off your bed. But in order to prevent that, you have to jump away from your bed. But she noted, uh, she, uh, she emphasized this. I was safe because my uh, bed did not have, um, it was sort of uh, part of the uh, furniture that was, um, you couldn't move it around. It was sort of adjacent to the floor, so there was no space under the bed. Mm -hmm. So she said that I'm in the safe zone. But man, you know, it, it's one of those things that's, uh, that is sort of uh, in the back of your head. And when you go for a sleepover, you're like, oh no, they have a place. Yeah, the especially as a kid, you have such a, oh, vivid, yeah. such a vivid imagination. And it actually, it actually, it, it turns out like, like it's really, really there. You literally feel something being there, even though it's, it's not. Um, yep. it's, it's called being a kid. And I remember yep. it perfectly because I was, I was profoundly scared of the dark. Like the dark for me was like this uh, shroud 
of of emptiness you could touch or, and feel, oh, man. right? So that, so I would crawl under under my blanket because because you know if I, for example, if my toes would would peek <laughs> out of the outside of the blanket, I would feel the dark, uh, you know, like touching me. So yeah, I I definitely know what you're talking about. I, I had a lot of problems after the lights were out uh, when uh, I, when I was a kid. Uh, did it occur to you that it was dark under your blankets too? No, I never thought of it like that, you know? Because children the, never do. They're never scared of the darkness under the blanket, you know? Because that, that, that's, that's not really the dark, you know, you don't, you don't, yeah, you don't, you just don't perceive it like that. Um, yeah. Again, it's, it's what being a kid is, you know? Um, and I remember, remember <clears throat> in the, in like the children's room where I used to sleep next to my yeah. brother's bed. Um, okay. but, uh, there was this chandelier, this old chandelier, uh, that okay. to me, because you always had some sort of light going into the room. Right. And okay. I would, I would like, uh, because it's, it's a chandelier, it's a bit shiny. Uh, you know, it would, it would, it would, uh, take this specific form, um, that I remember, okay. I remember perceiving it like this, this mean uh, mean looking um, eagle uh, just like staring at me uh, <laughs> like a Nazgul hovering above your bed oh okay now that why did you say that though Na- Nazgul yeah why did you why did you say that the Nazgul hovering over my bed well, do, do you know that I have a story like that or not well you just said it and I think that Nazgul is something that is scarier than an eagle okay first of all I'm I would like I'm I'm a bit uh it, it shook me when you when you mentioned that because I actually have a really really scary story about that. Um, okay. Which is n- like anything but naive. Uh which okay. which which I was actually considering if I should share or not. But then you said it and I'm like amazing. So I'm I'm going to sh- actually try to share. It. Like <laughs> okay. because it's simply it's amazing. I like it's like you, I, I told you the story sometimes before, and you you wanted me to to to, to tell it. But okay, um, so 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 wow. Okay, so it was um, twenty o seven. Okay. Okay. Or twenty o eight, something like that. Twenty o. You're a grown bastard that's not supposed to be scared, scared of the dark. Go on. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I was still living with, uh, with, uh, with my father and my okay. father's house. And, uh, uh, we did renovations and, um, that was like the first time that my brother and myself got separate rooms. Uh, obviously we got to enjoy them for a very short period of time because, you know, okay. uh, you know, I, I was already at, at college, <laughs> so, um, you know. And uh, things happened. We we moved, but you know, previously we lived for like twenty plus years in an apartment when we didn't have individual rooms, right? So it was it was big deal. So what happened is the living room was separated, and uh, part of it went to one room, and the bigger part went into another room. That another room was mine. So I actually took like the bigger part of what was uh, the living room uh, back in the day. And in the living room is where my father used to sleep. It was a very small apartment, right? We only had one extra room, which was the kids' room, where my brother and I uh, slept. And my brother had a like a working desk there all, all that time. I, my work desk okay. was adjacent to the living room. I don't want to bother you with details. But it was a modest living, but we, we managed. And um, my father used to sleep at that, uh, at, in, the, in the living room. So, also coincidentally, that was like 2007 was was the year when where I um, became a part of the Orthodox Church, uh, where I was when I was christened. Um, previous to that, I was actually an atheist. Um, so, for me, the year of 2007, besides being a very challenging year um, because of some personal things, uh, was the year where I discovered prayer uh, where I okay. discovered communicating with God 
uh, <laughs> and um, you know, it was st- still that initial period when you become a Christian, um, where you're full of, I don't know, um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't really know how to explain it really. Um, They call it convertitis. Yeah, whatever. But it was it was a great period, like really. Um, and uh, so I went to sleep one night in my bed. Um, I had the a prayer book, prayer book, and uh, the New Testament on a on a like a nightstand uh, right okay. next to the bed. And uh, I remember. I, 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 I like uh, tr- started to doze off, right? And I be- begin feeling like very, very, like this sense of danger starts okay. as this lamp, alarm lamp starts going off, right? Uh, this great sense of danger starts creeping in. And I feel, I start feeling extremely scared without having a clue why. But then I start, understanding that there is a presence of something which I which is uh, alien to me um, which I don't understand so I I so mind you that I'm, I'm I'm telling you this this is a very true thing that happened to me whatever the cause is I don't care but it happened okay. so I turn around in bed and I see And I see this creature. And the, the reason why, why I'm even saying this is because you described the best description I, I, could, I could provide you is like it looked like a Nazgul. Because wait, 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 wait. Just, just, uh, just to differentiate. Are we talking about those winged creatures or are we talking about ring wraiths? Uh, wraiths, ring wraiths. Oh, okay, for, because for me... A humanoid monster is always scarier than a huge winged animal, you know. So yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So this was obviously uh, first of all this 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 thing was hovering. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, it was. No, 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 no. Okay. It was okay. the scary, okay. like in in uh, no face, empty robe, and it was hovering, and it was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. So here's what happens now. Now this is this is the the weird part of it, right? Uh, and we shouldn't have recorded this at night, but go on. Yeah, I, I don't know. sense my you, you said You said scary story, though, and this is a real freaking scary story. You're talking about zombies in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> but look, man, the, 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 the scariest and the craziest part is... Okay. I'm, I'm, a, I'm awake, and it's not, it's not leaving. First of all, like it's like it's it's talking to me telepathically it's like it's pointing my 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 eyes towards the the bible and the prayer book and i see this squeaky voice like uh, like 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 a ironic voice i can't really describe it but it's 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 talking to me like this come on pray pray like i want to see you pray something like that right Okay, M, you have the weirdest guardian angel. Look, look, look. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like scared as hell. And I, and I figure uh, that it was actually not looking for me. Because it was, it was right there where my father used to sleep. And it's, it looked like it was looking for something. And then, uh... the, and then I, like, I like interrupted it. And then it like turned towards me and said all that. And then slowly, very slowly, creepingly slowly started disappearing until it was actually gone. Now, let me tell you this. This was so damn vivid, I actually went to a monastery to ask for for explanation. Because, you know, I still, to this day, do not see that as, as a dream. Because it wasn't. You understand? It's like... It's like me getting out of bed and speaking to a freaking outwardly creature. That happened, right? And I, I'm pretty sure that I wasn't asleep. Now, I'm not saying there's no chance that, you know, I didn't, you know, dream it all up. 
But you, you must understand, I, I, I immediately actually explained it to somebody uh, in, in, in a monastery. I don't want to bother okay. you with details. And I was told that it could, it might, you know, it could have been something really scary. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, you wanted you wanted a scary story. There you go, a scary story. <laughs> okay, I was pushing the eject button, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, really, I'm 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 sorry. I'm sorry for scaring you, man. But but this this really happened. It was it's it's the most it's one of the most vivid things. I mean, I remember it to this day, as it okay. happened yesterday. It's it's been more than ten years. Listen, I've had uh, sleep paralysis, I had night terrors, I had false awakenings, uh, I talked in my sleep. I never sleepwalked, as far as I know. I snored, you know, I had a lot of these, you know, um, irregularities with, a with the sleeping pattern. And as far as sleeping paralysis goes, I've never had the experience of a demon, you know, uh, like many people do. However... Uh, for anyone who's interested, there's a very interesting documentary from 2015 called The Nightmare. And it talks about, and it's about, I think, eight people uh, who, to, uh, who shared their stories uh, with their uh, long struggle with the issue of sleep paralysis. And the man, uh, to be quite honest, I, I, I'm not really sure if you should uh, watch it. But I well, think... let me be honest, I will not. Okay. But two stories really reminded me of that. Really. But let, let me ask you a thing. Sleep paralysis? Um, yeah. What is that, though? Okay. Uh, this is how it works. Uh, when, you, uh, when you fall asleep, your, your muscles simply stop working, you know? Uh, and that is to prevent you from, for example, if you, uh, you know, if you dream that you're walking, the reason that you don't stand up and walk is because uh, there's a disconnect between the brain and your muscles. This, this is a simple Ooh, thing. Oh, I think I know what that is then, because I, I had it once. Eh, okay. And now, sleep paralysis is when you wake up, but uh, the can't, brain... Can't move anything, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh my but, god, yes, it happened to me once. It was, ooh, it was so scary. You say that happened to you a couple of times? Uh, it happened to me, I think, two times. Oh, and, uh, that's, it, that's scary as hell, man. That's, that's yeah. extremely scary. It happened to me once. Wow. I remember it. Clear yeah, as yeah. day. It is, a, it is a famous phenomenon. Check it out. And uh, uh, the, let, me, let me ask you a thing. Did you freak out like I'm going to be stuck here forever? No, no, because no. when it happened, I, I knew what it was, because I've read about it previously, so I didn't really freak out. But, but the interesting thing was, though this is not up to your horror standards, uh, scary McFreak out, um, <laughs> because I, I sort of woke, uh, wo woke up, but I couldn't move. So I tried to make the sign of the cross, but it was very difficult because the hand was so heavy, so I go like, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the split second, I said the Holy Spirit. When I I regained total control. Huh. I'm not saying that this is 100 percent, you know, proof of super, supernatural. Maybe simply my brain connected at that specific moment. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Take hasty conclusions, but you know, just an interesting story for you guys. Um, I also had night terrors. Now these are really scary. Uh, and because you have two little girls, maybe you've experienced this, but you just don't know what it is, and you have maybe simply called it a nightmare. Uh, night terror is when you're screaming at the top of your lungs in sleep, and they can't wake you up. Oh yeah, yeah, that happened once with uh, with you with the older kid, and it was, oh, it, was yeah. it was it was it was it was scary as hell. You you just reminded me of it because I, I I've, I've simply I've simply forgotten it. But she was screaming her lungs off. And we, we 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 didn't know what what was going on. Like, did she, she hurt herself? But but yeah, you know yeah. what? She suddenly just stopped and went went back to sleeping. And we were like, "Wow!" Yeah, that's it. Um, uh, night terrors generally aren't associated with nightmares. 
because you will simply, uh, when I had my first night there, I remembered I was in this forest with red cobwebs, but that's all I remember. I mean, that, that, sounds, that sounds scary now, but I don't recall anything, uh, you know, um, particularly scary happening in a dream. Suddenly, I realize that I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, and somebody is shaking me by, uh, by my hands, and they're clutched in front of me, you know? And suddenly, I, I think to myself, why am I screaming? And they open my eyes, and they realize that I'm not in my bed. I'm on the <laughs> floor next to my bed. <laughs> uh, my father is trying to wake me up. My mother is scared, beepless at the entrance of my room. Like, what did just happen? My sister, I think she was, uh, she's younger than me. I think she was 17 at the time. Uh, her comment was, uh, now this is happening at around 2 a.m. I can't believe that nobody called the police. Yeah. You know, because it's so hard. And after we went to bed, my 17-year-old sister went to my parents' room and lied between them because she was so scared. My <laughs> granny... Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my granny, who lived uh, uh, lived a uh, uh, floor under us, but we were connected uh, with stairs uh, in our apartment building. She couldn't fall asleep for the entire night because she was so stressed because of my screaming. Uh, the dog could not enter my room for a couple of days, <laughs> and the cat because uh, our dog couldn't uh, take the stairs because they're sort of steep, but the cat could could. Uh, the cat wouldn't climb on the on our floor for a couple of days, and when she did, she w wouldn't want to enter my room. Can you yeah. imagine that screaming? Can you imagine that screaming? Yeah, I, mean, I, I definitely I'm, can. I'm a loud guy, and imagine if I screamed and screamed, and I don't stop screaming. Yeah, it's um, considering the fact that I went through it with the kid, I absolutely know the the ridiculousness of it. <laughs> you know, honestly, speaking of scary stories, like I think every parent probably has a bunch of them, uh, yep. which they probably tend to forget. Like well, this, this parents also do. <laughs> yeah, like this night terror thing. Like I've I've completely forgotten about it until you mentioned it. Um, but you know, speaking about that, we actually had like I actually had two absolutely terrifying. Um, uh, events with 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 one of my kids, so the okay, the because, other one. Because, okay, because I know your absolute uh, 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 scary stories. I will remove my headphones right now. <laughs> no, stop the podcast, and I will. I don't want to know how it ends. <laughs> B, don't worry. The Nazgul is not coming for you. <laughs> okay, you literally said there was a Nazgul, <laughs> and, and we don't know. Yes. <laughs> just, just make the sign of the cross and you're good you're good Bible and a prayer book next to you <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God um, well uh, you know but, I, uh, no, uh, sorry we could <laughs> we could make inspiring Nazgul memes you know like uh, this creepy Nazgul hovering above you pray pray <laughs> 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 but i guess it depends it depends on on uh on how people will draw it right if somebody yeah. draw, draws it like like uh cartoonish it will be more like you know what, what, what you said before guardian angel taking the form of a nazgul being like oh i took this form because you're you would recognize me <laughs> you know? i don't even remember when was lord of the rings when did it? Uh, when did they uh, start with those movies? What, what What was the? No, it was definitely before that event. So, uh, oh, it was in like two uh, thousand one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just just to be clear, this this thing, like it, it, saying Nazgul was the best way. Think of a. Think of a, a mix between a Nazgul. And you know, He Man the cartoon, and there's that little magician hovering thingy. Oh no! Oh yeah. god! You just made it worse. You just made it worse. You know, 
No, no, and I'm not like saying, oh, he was creepy. No, he was adorable, but I know what you're trying to say, and then you literally need to combine it, okay? Are yeah, you... when oh, you listen. merge them. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm using that. Listen to this. This is really creepy. Uh, are you next to your computer right now? I mean, I can be because, you know, some computer is one of my, one of my spells. I can, I can cast 10 times a day. Okay, if you want something really creepy, uh, go to your computer and type shadow people and uh, click images. Sure. Um, and shadow people it is. Forever. I sleep forever. Shadow I mean, people. Shadow people. And I go to images. Damn. Three, two, one. Well, mm, nothing resembling, nothing actually resembling what, what I... Uh... Okay, but you know what, uh, uh, what reminded me of them? Because you, you compared them to the wizard from uh, He-Man. Uh -huh. he, he has like these eyes under this wide-brimmed hat. And mm -hmm. one of the characteristics of these shadow people are people with wide-brimmed hats and glowing eyes underneath. And I was like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, there, 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 there was no glowing eyes. There was no face. Uh, but anyways, it's I don't want to... scarier than glowing eyes. I don't no want to re-experience re that. It's, it's... I don't... I, I was like... While I was talking it, about it, I was like reliving it again. And uh, I, I did not feel comfortable. So... Uh, moving on to more okay. uncomfortable things. <laughs> oh boy! No, I mean, I mean, th these are like real, real life um, things that that parents go through, you know. Um, so I already mentioned this before in one of our episodes, I think. But my older daughter, she had uh, so-called fibril contractions, which is basically like like a schizo attack. Uh, would be the best, the best way to. Um, uh, compare it, but um, you know, to me, she looked like she was dying, like literally, oh, yeah. because she, her lips went blue, her eyes went, uh, you know, to look, you know, behind her head, um, yeah. and she com completely went blue and started shaking violently, and uh, then you know, I, I was. I thought she was dying in my arms. And that was one of the scariest things that I've ever experienced. Um, and the other one was when we were at sea. Um, okay. You know, when she uh, elaborately, uh, deliberately um, let herself go through, uh, through that, um, you know, what, what, what we use to put kids uh, into water. That circle thing. Whatever the name of that is in English. I really... Uh, like my vocabulary is is fairly limited when it when it comes to these everyday objects, um, but she let herself go in, in and she she sunk, um, okay. and you know it, it was a very very scary moment. Uh, fortunately, my wife caught her by by the arm. Otherwise, we would have to like dive <laughs> like yeah. to get her, like which which we would have done. Uh, and and we would we would have managed, but it was it was a, a like a paralyzing moment, uh, realizing that your kid is sinking. It's ridiculous. So those are the things that I would recommend everybody to avoid. And you can imagine when that happened, we bought for her this one one piece thing. You you can't drown in that. <laughs> like she she looked like a freaking robot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like mm. yeah those were the, 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 the scariest things I've ever actually experienced but I don't want to uh, keep talking about scary stories uh, let's, let's, let's find something uh, nice to end the episode with were, were, were those Halloween cookies tasty at least Oh yeah, they're they're actually quite good, and because I'm bit on a bit on a diet, I literally had like one. Even though last year I had at least fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, but you know, it's once a year, so 
I'll treat myself to one or two like this year, but I won't be having more. But they were really good. Uh, and uh, ginger cookies? What what kind of cookies? No, they were just uh, I I don't know how you would call them. I suppose just ordinary like butter cra- uh, uh, butter crackers or something like that. You know, just ordinary nice cookies that uh, have sort of uh, this uh, wide area for you to paint. And we were also making uh, buttons. I made four, like two jack of la- uh, two jack o' lanterns, a, witch, a witch's hat, and a lich. Nice. So, oh, what, what are yeah? you doing? What are you doing on on Thursday evening? Uh, I'm going to my German language school, and the teacher is throwing a little a little Halloween party where I don't know. It's just, you know, a little get-together, nothing special. But it's, it's cute, and they pretty, uh, very much like it. And uh, during class today, she asked me to draw something on the, on the window pane with these special markers that she got from AliExpress that you can draw on, <laughs> on, on glass. You won't like what you're about to hear. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, on one uh, window pane, I drew a large laughing... Uh, Jack o' lantern, behind which is a very jack o' lantern that has a zombie gnawing on, on, on its top and saying, Brains. However, on the other, I drew something that I saw ages ago and it made me laugh so hard that I simply had to recreate it. Uh, you know that St. Luke is the patron of iconographers. Yep. And on icons, he is often depicted, depicted painting an icon. Okay. So I saw this drawing, which made me laugh so hard. It was like a drawing of an icon of Saint Luke painting, but he's painting a jack of lantern on the on the on the canvas. And I laughed so hard uh, about it because this is something that a Russian or Serb did, because you know of the old calendar. So I drew that, and my teacher was so annoyed by this. This is a secular school. By the way, we were really good friends. So she wasn't like, you know, um, burn it down. But she was like, uh, how am I going to explain this to the parents? So what did they do? I turned that St. Luke into a Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. Problem solved. And I hope that uh, our audience doesn't reach till this part of the episode, because it's controversial, but <laughs> I sent it to a deacon, and he laughed so hard what he drawed first, and he also laughed at how I fixed it. <laughs> so now it doesn't offend anyone. Well, doesn't it? I mean, it's a bit blas- blasphemic, right? Sorry? It's a bit blasphemic, right? It's not. It's, it's no longer a St. Luke. It never was a St. Luke to begin with. Yeah. So, okay, I was going to invite you to uh to uh what I referred to as cocktail slava in uh, in 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 my cozy apartment uh where we're going to have friends because it's it's my patron saint and we are still not that kind of family that, you know, rents a restaurant and makes yeah. uh, uh you know, food fest, uh food and drink fest. Um, but we actually <clears throat> invite close friends and, um, um, you know, just enjoy each other's company. So, I mean, you're welcome to come if you can fit it somehow with, uh, whatever nah. Halloween plans you have, but <laughs> I let you know, I let you know on that day, but nobody knows the hour. Well, uh, pay, the pay is the same. Uh, even if you come in the eleventh hour, uh, hmm. don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this was yeah. B totally refusing to come to my Slava, which is in 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 Serbia, uh, like a really big uh, insult. Oh, actually, actually, no, 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 sorry. I just remember that it falls on Thursday, so I will be there. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, now that, now that I know this is an insult, 
uh, that I remembered I'm 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 a very bad person. Uh, yeah. At least publicly, I'll say I'll go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I don't want to uh, to have any controversy associated with my name. No, no, no. I think Halloween party uh, will work better. We'll see. Why not they, both? They have cookies. <laughs> We have on Slava as well, and uh, by the way, Slava cookies are always better than Halloween cookies. Well, I don't know, this is going to be a keto-friendly Slava. Even better. I mean, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to have to have bread, so... You can't well, have okay. anything in Serbia without bread. Well, actually, to be quite honest, I can eat a lot of foods that most Serbs eat with bread, without bread. Mm, sure. I mean, one one can tell. Um, you know, we we. Uh, <laughs> I I am not allowed to fat shame you. It's just too easy. No, I'm 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 writing that down on a blackboard, uh, fifteen times, or whatever Bart Simpson mode. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, am. Oh my god, it, it's, it looks like we, we had an argument. Well, you know, we, we have to have some drama if you're to attract new viewers, listeners. Oh, yeah, viewers, <laughs> YouTube. Um, so drama, right? Yeah. So this is a drama now. Well, we made a couple of drama episodes... And look where they got us to. Nowhere. Uh, church mouse drama. Church mouse dramacles. Dramacles. Um, sort of a word. For everybody uh, celebrating or otherwise, you know, having a thing with Halloween... Uh, we wish you a happy Halloween. Is that how you do it? Uh, I don't uh, I know. Okay. But not to Orthodox Christians. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> we wish you a happy Saint Luke or uh, whatever Saint you celebrate on your calendar. <laughs> but, es but especially Saint Luke. Especially Saint Luke. Yeah. He's like, he's like, the best apostle, just so that we're clear. Yeah, I know you like Peter and Paul. He wasn't I know. An he wasn't. He was an evangelist. He wasn't an apostle. Psst. It's the same thing, man. Come on. Oh, man, oh. you don't even know your own saint. <laughs> Shameful. Well, drama. Drama. Who drew the first icon? Sorry. Who drew the first icon? I know. Well, tell us. Uh, Saint Luke. And it was an icon of whom? Uh, Mother of God. Okay, I was just checking because I was I was I was gonna shame you or something. I thought we we just. And end with more drama, but I've I've obviously shamed myself. So uh, drama's on me. You you should be on the receiving end of uh, shame and drama and guilt. So you're going to sleep now, right? No, I'm going to upload a video, and then I'm going to sleep. But you know, when you go to sleep, are you going to be able to you know uh, fall asleep without fearing uh, the you know, cute thing from him and mixed with Nazgul. Okay, I just forgot about it. <laughs> you have the audacity. Actually, remind me. <laughs> Look, the only thing I'm I'm sorry about is not having your talent and actually being able to draw this thing for you. But, maybe yeah. that's why you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe God only knows. But I, I was, I was, I was told that one can be taught, self-taught, really. Yeah, but mm, but you, not do you. Your, you do your, you know, uh, IT stuff. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, thank you for sharing your childhood fears. Thank you for reminding me about things that I that I fear still. Oh, um, yeah. By the way, I was one of those kids who had trouble sleeping after watching a horror movie. Thus, my absolute uh, distaste of horror movies to date. You can change. What one can change. Yeah. But maybe I should stick to IT. I, I mean, really. I suggest you do. <laughs> and Mexican soap operas. Uh, whatever rocks your boat. Good night. Good night, Em. Share, <laughs> like, subscribe. Share, like, subscribe. Dream. Dream nice dreams and uh, all that. All that good stuff. Slap like. <laughs> <laughs> Bye now. I am. Hey, this is M. Uh, so I just asked B why was he so like bored at the end of the podcast? And he said, literally, it's because when we began recording, I saw that I have an entire cheesecake on my desk and that there's no way I'm going to start eating it until we're the episode is finished. I just needed to have this recorded. Thank you.